Hey guys, Jason here, uh, coming at you from the farm. Just a really, really quick video today, just to follow up on our maple syrup RO. Uh, our season is coming to an end here, and I uh, made an observation on this reverse osmosis machine that I wanna pass along. At the end of the season here, we get the syrup, the trees start to bud out, right? And we get uh, the ends of the taps kinda almost start to close off of like a gelatinous substance, you get a little bit of mold here and there. It's that temperature warming up. You know, we're moving into the very, very end of the season. Some folks call this uh, buddy. It gets the syrup and the sap gets buddy. Uh, you can still use it. You know, I probably would not sell it. And I noticed on this RO, um, it's not that our, it's running a little bit slower with this buddy sap. I'm having to change this pre-filter quite a bit more often. And that's a five micron pre-filter. I had somebody asking about these fittings here. Yeah, those are those are 3 8 inch NPT. They screw in to a quarter inch hose and those have been an absolute pain. I've had to Teflon the crud out of those. So again, we're pulling this sap, all kinds of crud and stuff gets in here. And so what I did, instead of changing this pre-filter all the time and having that expense, I thought, well, what if we just got a, a mesh screen and this came from McMaster Car. 50 micron and I tried to put that in the line between this bucket and where the pump the intake to the pump that's the outlet there and it was just too much it just would not it would not that pump would not pressurize the system it was just too much trying to suck through here I thought well if I had this in the line then at least you know a lot of that bigger stuff this here would actually catch it so it sounds a little ridiculous right to have a, a pre-filter on the pre-filter but I was trying to eliminate having to change that guy there about every eh, 50 to 80 gallons of sap now. We've got the uh, evaporator going over there and uh, bringing, that, bringing that down to do a draw off here. That's our third boil there. And uh, this here, we got a smaller one, we'll do a fourth. Uh, yeah, you can watch our other video on the complete build. I've got links to um, all of the, the parts. Okay, so we just finished up a batch here, and you can see we're empty on our sap bucket, and here's why I like the clear pre-filter housing. See, I can see we're sucking air in, and that's okay on this pump, but you can see that, uh, that level dropping. And so I'm just, I open up this valve all the way at the end, and I'm just straight shooting sap right into the bucket. Now, it's not going through the RO filter, but you can see I'm not wasting sap that way, right? And uh, it's just emptying out that system and I'll, I'll empty all the sap out until this line runs clear. And um, then I'll know my, my sap is through the system when that line gets clear. And uh, then I'll run the permeate through at the end just to flush everything. You can see here taking this off, see all the crud. And this is just, Noticing we get more of this at the end of the season for whatever reason. Now this is, again, just a pre-filter before your RO filter. So I'm pretty confident those are, are still in real good shape. As is usually the case, my 12-year-old my son figures things out before I do. Um, so here's what we did. We put, I was trying to put that filter in between coming out of the sap bucket on the suction side of the pump. That pump is not powerful enough to move liquid through there. So Sam's suggestion was, we'll put it on the outlet um, before your pre-filter. And so the pump's pushing it through instead of pulling it. Uh, and that will save our pre-filter there, it should. Now, a couple things here. You can see like I was talking about, those stupid fittings. I have not Teflon those at all, and that's what you got. So those are 3 8 and you can see what those are doing. So it's not the housing on that pre-filter, it's not the housing on that thing, it's the actual fittings. So, you know, buy those at your own risk. I'll still put a link, but just know you've got to Teflon those and torque them down. I believe I got the 50 micron screen. Now I will go back and I will order the 80 micron. 50 micron is just, it's too small. Uh, so I'll get the 80 micron and that should help as well. Now the only downside to this is that you're going to be you're going to be protecting your pre-filter, but I really wanted that on the suction side of the pump to protect the pump. So some type of bigger strainer maybe in the bottom uh, would do it. But uh, looks like this this is going to work here. 
We are getting pressure with this on the outlet side of that pump. And this is something, again, I can take apart and you can manually clean versus having to replace those pre-filters all the time. Next year's season, I'm sure we'll have some improvements on this thing, but uh, all in all, we've been real happy with uh, this RO and uh, it's done the job for us this season. Again, you know, numbers on this thing, we figure we have saved 62% uh, boil time uh, right up front. And that, that's not just boil time, but that's all your wood that you're saving, 62%. We went from 66 gallons, condensed that down into 25 with one pass uh, through this RO system. Anyhow, you guys got any questions? Uh, leave them in the comments, but hopefully, uh, hopefully this uh, helps somebody out. Take care. Have a good one.